All right, Greenleaf fans. Now, yeah, still haven't done a finale video yet. But look, we got time before season four, all right? So give me some slack. But really, you know, over Thanksgiving being at home, I believe there was a uh, season three marathon of Greenleaf on. I think I made a couple posts on social media about the fact that I was watching season three. And you're probably like, well, Jeremy, what's the relevance in that when you still haven't done videos? The relevance is the fact that instead of binging the season like I had done with seasons one and two, I was watching the episodes together, of course, in a binge like fashion. But the thing was, I was talking about the show with my mom while it was airing. That's why I felt disconnected with Greenleaf because even though I've officially caught up with the series, I haven't had the opportunity to do with that show what I've been able to do with the haves and the have nots with my mom, which is bouncing ideas off of each other. I was just watching the show and even though I was intrigued by what I was seeing, I didn't really have anybody to bounce ideas off of. Now the argument could be made, well, Jeremy, you got a huge fan base of followers. Why didn't you just talk to them? That's not the issue. It's the fact that I I just feel like I would, you know, my mom, we're as the tag team for the haves and the have nots, I kind of felt more comfortable talking about it with her because she was able to throw in some have and have not similarities that, you know, I could really, um, I guess you could say, comprehend a lot easier. Now, the reason I'm making this video isn't to do like a review of the entire series or whatever. But I will admit this. I think that Greenleaf possibly has the potential to outdo the haves and the have nots. So you probably, Jeremy, that's blasphemous. How dare you? This entire channel is named the haves and the have nots review. But exactly, it's called review. It's not called the haves and the have nots. It's called not that is not called the haves and the have nots is the best it's called the haves and the have nots review where i talk about the good i talk about the bad i talk about possible improvements and where the show's going but that doesn't mean that there are other shows out there like my favorite show to watch is the haves and the have nots bar none but that doesn't mean there are other shows out there that can not outdo it same thing with michael jackson one of my favorite favorite artists of all time but that doesn't mean michael jackson can't be outdone by a future artist at some point, you know, in terms of, well, maybe that was a bad example because no, actually no, because you know, Michael Jackson, when you say somebody outdid Michael Jackson, what exactly does that mean? Are we talking about vocal performance, dancing ability, style in terms of fashion, all the multiple records he's broken? I mean, when, when somebody says, somebody is better or somebody outdid someone else there are just so many different elements of that it's not it's not simply oh he outdid this so he's automatically better no you really need to dig deep when i talk about greenleaf i'm just talking about how the first season i mean it's one of those seasons where i'm not giving it a lot of flack because it was season one it was kind of setting the tone getting the characters established and as the series went on it got better and better and to be honest, watching season three at once, you know, while discussing things with my mom, it was a damn good season. And I have to admit, season three as a whole for Greenleaf, in my opinion, was better than the entirety. If you look at season five of the haves and have nots as a whole. And yes, I am talking about the first 10 episodes that really brought the season down. If we would have went from episodes 11 to 33, would have been a hell of a season, might have been up there in my top two favorite seasons for the haves and have nots, but the first 10 episodes really brought it down, not to mention during the back half, the whole pimp Candace and the whole it's my money thing that really brought the mood down as well for me. So I did enjoy season five of the haves and have nots, but I dare say that I think Greenleaf season three was better, despite the haves and have nots having a lot of great cliffhangers. But yeah, I think that Greenleaf has the potential to overcome the haves and the have nots. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it will kill it with the ratings in terms of, oh, the, oh a green leaf is going to get higher ratings than the haves and the have nots. I'm really talking about the overall quality of a show because there have been plenty of TV shows and movies that have either been canceled, the franchise is canceled, or critics gave it low scores because 
it's it really comes down to what do you base a show or movies what do you base success off of the money it brings in or the quality of the content yes i understand this is a business so if a show isn't getting the ratings that means it's not getting the money like the return that a person puts into the show the investment so sometimes those shows and movies get canceled but just because a show gets top notch ratings and it's the number one show on a, um, a, a network doesn't mean it's the best show. It means that it gets the most views. So I will say this much. Greenleaf is only finishing up season three. Have and have nots is moving into season six. I will admit that Greenleaf does have some flaws. And I mean, a lot of people and I'm really talking more about people, other fans, what they say, as opposed to what I think. The main complaints really is, you know, some of the acting is off and that's really it. I think what really pins the have, I think what, I think what Greenleaf fans really have over the haves and have nots, what they say about it is the fact that the haves and have nots has the bad notion of introducing so many new characters, unresolved storylines or cycling the same storylines, dragging things out and yada, 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 which is absolutely correct. Greenleaf hasn't done that yet per se i will admit this season three i'm really going to judge greenleaf based all season four because season three during that back half was really fire and what i mean by that is that every week when i got online it was a crap ton of posts and whatnot and more people demanding i review the show and i could definitely see why because the back half of greenleaf season three really got my attention more than the haves and the have nots during its last four to five episodes and that's a debatable context for me to bring up because i will admit that the haves and have nots when a season is about to close out that's when it's get that's when it gets really good but that's also a problem because if the very end of the season is the best part that means the 10 17 plus to 20 episodes leading up to those last four to five episodes really weren't that good so I will admit that Greenleaf, in my opinion, does have the potential, but season four of the haves and have nots is arguably the worst season. So I will admit I will keep an eye out on Greenleaf season four. And if the quality of that show increases from season three, then I do admit that the possibility of Greenleaf being the better show is definitely something that can happen so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and like i said before when i say green leaf has the potential to outdo the haves and the have nots i'm really talking about more so the quality um the interest in the show the storylines the characters that's what i'm talking about more than just the ratings itself just my opinion so let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below because I really want to know what you feel about this possible speculation about Greenleaf becoming the number one show on OWN. And once again, number one in terms of interest, quality, characters, and that it factor that makes you want to tune in each Tuesday. I feel like with the haves and have nots, myself and a lot of other fans, it's more of a loyalty thing where well we've invested so many years in the show we might as well keep on riding the train and while the trailers themselves make tuesday nights exciting when the episode airs it doesn't always deliver but with greenleaf it's just an ongoing saga that you just want to know more about because the whole bishop and rochelle thing the lady may who's so-and-so's real daddy is so-and-so really a girl oh um the abusive relationship it was intriguing to say the least have and have nots is more like I'm watching to finally see Justin get his comeuppance, Candace gets what's been coming to her, Veronica to finally pay for her crimes and whatnot. But with Greenleaf, it's more like we're still un unpackaging the massive story that's going on. So, yeah, let's have a good discussion in the comments below, and I'll talk to you all soon.